Ladies and gentlemen, Rustin with Metalholic with me, the multi-talented DJ Aspa of 6 a.m. and Guns N' Roses. How are things How in are the you? world of Aspa <laughs> these days? Oh, amazing, man. We we're, uh, you know, we, meaning me and my alter ego, <laughs> we're doing great. <laughs> no, everything's good, man. I've been busy, uh, uh, really happy and stoked about the 6 a.m. album. Um, it looks like we got some more uh, shows coming up with guns, which I'm stoked about, and uh, launched the new clothing line, Ash for Swag, at ashforswag.com, and that's just, you know, really doing well, so I'm really happy uh, things are going good right now. Yeah, you've got so many irons in the fire on any given day. <laughs> when do you find time yeah. to breathe? Uh, the four hours I sleep a night. <laughs> I was going to say, that's got to um, be no. you get. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, my thing is, is if I'm not working, then I feel, uh, you know, it, it, I feel lazy. So, I it's hard for me to take a day off because I just sit there and think about work. You know, I'm I'm literally a workaholic. I absolutely love it. You know, and they say if you, you know, if you love what you do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. And it's actually really true. I just there's not enough hours in the day, and I get out you know, bright and early and I, I work till late, late night. And I just, I love what I do, you know? And that's the way that it should be in a perfect world. So yeah, you just got to create your own perfect world. There you go. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> well, I'm going to take you back in time a little bit here. Most people are unaware mm -hmm. of this outside of your little circle, but in 2001, <clears throat> the year you released the debut beautiful creatures album, I believe you also recorded yeah. You also recorded a tribute album to Ted Nugent with the late Randy Castillo and Chuck Garrick. Who's now yeah, I did. I did. And I actually did that, I think, a, a year or two before that. I did that uh, quite, a, quite yeah, a long time ago now. But, yeah, I did. And, and it's something I'm super proud of just because I got a chance to play with Randy before he passed. And he was just such a, you know, just an inspiration. I loved, you know... That, that album was a lot of fun to do just because of that. And, um, of course, I love Ted Nugent. And <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I, I did a bunch of tribute albums way, way, way back. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Well, well and it's sort of interesting because it was because Ted Nugent dropped off the, the Kiss thing in Texas, the Beautiful Creatures got their their first big show before you even had a name back then if i recall i know how how yeah absolutely yeah we we went into you know our first we got signed to warner brothers with beautiful creatures and our first concert was uh opening up for kiss um 60, people i think it was in detroit uh, which is their big place detroit rock city and so yeah just just the, it's it's really weird going into that knowing you know like wow i just did a tribute album because you know i have no money <laughs> so you know so you do what you can coming up the ladder and you you know and and but you know it was such a cool cool album to work on you know and and you know i didn't pay anything anyway barely but <laughs> but we all had a blast doing it and uh, it was just ironic that you know a couple years later you know you know we were out there playing playing in that slot so it's pretty fun it's weird how life works that way but you've got you've had a lot of that stuff we'll talk about that in a minute but uh as you said <laughs> the new 6 a.m album this is gonna hurt dropped immediately jumped to number one on the billboard charts that's got to make your chest yeah. swell with pride it does it does you know because we we took a while to come out with this next record and and uh you know, and so, so for, you know, people to, to take to it so well, um, it, it was just overwhelming. Like I, I knew, like the one thing I do know is I'm really proud of this record. I'm proud of the last record too, but we all really went into this album going, you know what, we set the bar, you know, without knowing it, we set the bar pretty high, uh, on the heroin diaries. Um, so Going into this one, the, the beautiful part is we didn't have to really work on what 6 a.m. going to sound like. We could focus more on let's really up our playing on it. Let's really push ourselves musically and lyrically, and, and let's really hone in and focus on just great songs, one after another. We want to, you know, like like they 
they used to put out albums, you know, not saying they still don't, but, all, you know, a lot of people nowadays focus more on just the single, you know, whereas, the, you know, what was great and what I miss and what I think, you know, Nicky and James miss is the old albums. It was never about iTunes and it, it was never about, you know, a single, so to speak. It was about a collection of work, you know, an album that, that really told a story, you know, when you think back, you know, to some really great albums, you know, like, you know, I remember like Queen's right, mine, mine, what was it, mine crime or whatever? I can't even remember the name of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, stuff like that where they were concept records. And I, I've always loved that, you know, where it kind of told a story and it made it fun for the listener. So, you know, going into uh, Make Six Am Records, that's what's really fun about it. It's just a, it's like a big, you know, freaky art project <laughs> right. well, um, you know if all you do is concentrate on creating singles then you're not focusing on the intriguing stuff that kind of brings the whole album together and, and you're right we've gotten away from that yeah and i yeah and i think that the audience it's easy for the message the overall message to get lost you know so i think uh i think the cool thing that i'm i'm proud about about this record is you know, there's a there's an entire message that goes from song one to the end. You know, and and it's a really powerful message, and it's cool. You know, we had a had a lot of fun writing this record and and making it. You know, so I'm glad people like it. Well, and Heroin Diaries was written for Nikki's book at the time. This album was inspired mm -hmm. by or inspiration for his photos. Tell us a little bit about how that changed the songwriting dynamic. <laughs> Well, I mean, the you know, he's always been uh, into photography. I mean, we were looking at pictures back, you know, when we were writing the Heroin Diaries. He, had, he was always, you know, shooting pictures and into it, and he's just got such a great talent with it, you know. And um, um, so this, you know, the, you know, there were songs where we'd start writing, and it would inspire him to set up a photo shoot. So it, it kind of went both ways on this. You know, we were, you know, looking at some pictures that would inspire us or, you know, or vice versa, you know, so it was, it, it kind of, uh, they definitely stand alone, but they, they, uh, you know, they go together quite well too. So it's, 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 uh, you know, if, if you go out and buy his photography book, which you should, um, it's just awesome. Like really great, cool, artistic, very demented, distorted, you know, uh, view on, on what beauty is, you know, or what beauty, you know, people think beauty really is, but, um, it stands alone. It's just a great book to go out and get, read, and the album stands alone too, but, but as a package, you know, there's, it's definitely, uh, you know, there's a, uh, they intertwine, which is really nice. And, uh, it was sort of a different thing this time as, as opposed to having a, a line to follow with heroin diaries. You got to be more creative this time around. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think I think just being able to focus more on songwriting, you know, and just really pushing ourselves musically, you know. Um, I really tried to, uh, personally, I tried to really up the guitar end of things. You know, this album has a lot more, you know, guitar. It's a very guitar-driven record, which is cool. Um, but put that aside, just the lyrical content, the, the overall message, I think, is... is you know, it's very touching and deep and, and, you know, hopefully people can take something away from the album when they listen to it and, and apply it. And, you know, hopefully it, you know, or in no means, uh, uh, saints are trying to preach, but I think there's things, there's topics in this world that people just kind of turn a blind eye to that, that we kind of like to, to, you know, poke at the nerve a little and make people think. So, now, 6 a.m., and I'm going to ask you about that in a minute, but 6 a.m. was never meant to be a full-on band, but, but an outlet for you and Nikki and James. Seeing the response to the first two albums, do you see this becoming more than that? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's that's kind of, I mean, I don't think, you know, will we ever have a drummer in the band? No. 
you know, will will we ever kind of call ourselves a band? I don't know. I mean, I think I think you know what's cool about it is we don't take that, we don't focus on that part of it. You know, it's like, hey, we're in a band. It's like we're we're just three really super good friends. We're all three producers, three, you know three songwriters and three, basically three entrepreneurs. And we just get together and we have the best time making music. And that at the end of the day is what music should be about. It shouldn't be about I'm in a band and my band's better than your band. It's like, it's just, you know, it should be about just buddies getting together and creating music. And, And I think that's what we have. That's so magical is we don't put the focus on all that. I mean, for God's sakes, we don't have a drummer, you know, <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, the fans are what, uh, what kind of have turned this into a really cool band, I guess, you know, and that's, it happened organically. And I think that's, what's cool about it, you know, is, is we never were trying to push a band on anybody's throat. You know, I mean, we've, we've only toured two months out of the entire two records we've done. And, and, uh, you know, our focus is just, you know, 6 a.m. is definitely a, a very artistic outlet. I go away, you know, do Guns N' Roses. He's doing Motley and James is producing other albums. And when we all come together, we're 6 a.m. And we, you know, whatever that is, you know, but uh, it's it's very magical. You know, I, 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 uh, I do know I played I played with a lot of lot of great people in this world and written a lot of songs and whatnot and the magic that we have when we get into the room people look for a lifetime I mean it's a chemistry thing that's why there were bands like you know like Led Zeppelin and people like Aerosmith and you know it's it's like a relationship and no matter how hot the chick is if it's if if that if it doesn't click, if there isn't that magical connection, it doesn't matter. It's never going to work, you know? And I think finding two other guys that can basically finish your sentences and we're all so connected musically that way is what makes it so fun. So basically it's <laughs> about that, that chemistry and passion with each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's just finding that chemistry together with the right people. It's the same in all relationships, and obviously music is a very passionate thing, so... Exactly. Exactly. 